Joe Biden is ending the year the same way he started it, with humiliating gaffes, stumbles and mumbles. And the closer it draws to 2024, the more damaging these gaffes are for the president, whose team are trying their hardest to keep him upright ahead of the gruelling presidential campaign trail next year. Sky News All-Stars Megyn Kelly, James Morrow and Liz Storer analyse Joe Biden's latest gaffes and ask whether he's fit to contest another term. It wouldn't be a Joe Biden event if it all went smoothly. And the annual lighting of the Christmas tree was no exception, says Sky News All-Star James Morrow. Anyway, of course, it's Christmas time, and that can only mean one thing, the annual lighting of the White House Christmas tree. But this being the Biden administration, well, not everything's gonna go to plan, right? I mean, look, it started off well enough with an event producer whipping up the hand-picked crowd to cheer their favorite president. Got my applause. And applause, applause, applause. Happy holidays. For over 100 years, we gather together to light the national Christmas tree. Shades of the infamous please clap moment. Hey, by the way, has anyone seen Jeb Bush lately? Maybe he's doing events at the White House. But not one to stand on ceremony. The president got right into it. Five, four, three, two, one. It's beautiful, Clark. God, you can only imagine the nervousness as he counted down. Is he going to remember four? Is he going to remember three? <laughs> we also got to see, thanks to a technical glitch, the unsung hero and nemesis of the Biden administration in action. Watch the lower right-hand corner of your screen, and you can actually see the teleprompter in action. Bill and I are honored to welcome you to the National Christmas Tree Lighting. Thanks to Interior Secretary Deb Holland and the National Park Service Foundation. They're the ones doing this. And a special thanks to tonight's host, Mickey. <laughs> and of course, there was the usual exit stage left, mm -hmm. or is it right? Uh, well, I don't know. Which is it, Jill? This way, not that way. And did you notice the little jog he did too? It's because he's so fit and so vigorous. So much of a campaign trail disaster also waiting to happen there. Joe Biden is well known for his attempts at jokes that go disastrously wrong. And this was on show yet again at the annual turkey pardoning ceremony, where the president mixed up the names of the world's biggest pop stars, according to Sky News all-star Megyn Kelly. How old he is? But he sneaked out for the turkey pardoning. You know, we do this thing before Thanksgiving where he pardons the turkeys and lets them live. And he couldn't even get that right. He tried to make some comment about Taylor Swift's tour, but he wound up referencing Beyonce's tour, but he didn't refer to her as Beyonce. He called her uh, Britney, as in Britney Spears, who's not on tour at all. Now, just to get here, Liberty and Bell had to beat some tough odds in competition. They had to work hard to show patience and be willing to travel over a thousand miles. You could say even this harder than getting a, a ticket to the Renaissance tour or 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 Brit Britney's tour. She's down in it's kind of warm in Brazil right now. He can't get anything out right. Even if this all he had to do was say, I pardon you, I pardon you, little turkeys. Couldn't do it. And the president backed it up with another joke that fell flat, reveals James Morrow. But first, as we head into the Christmas party season. How about a little small talk tip from President Joe Biden? You know, 
find out the other person's name, and then kick the conversation off with a little fact about yourself or your job to get things booming. Hey, Nick. This is uh, Nick Reality. Now look, my, my Marine carries that. It has a code to blow up the world. That doesn't, this is not nuclear weapons, oh, is it? No. All right, okay. <laughs> Come on, doesn't everyone have a Marine with codes that can blow up the world? No? Well, maybe there'll be something special for you under the tree. But remember, a nuclear holocaust is for life, not just for Christmas. Biden's polling panic after the break. Joe Biden's latest cringeworthy struggles with the teleprompter were also captured. But first, hey, it's late in the show, what haven't we played yet? I know, a good old game of Joe versus the teleprompter. All right, this week's bout took place in Colorado. Both the president and the teleprompter were fighting fit. So let's get ready to rumble. Round one. Instead of cutting them, or like Congressman Trump and both were going to do. Ooh, gotta give that one to the teleprompter. And I think the president is getting a little punch drunk as we head into round two. But, but I am friends with your leader, Mr. Moon, you know, home, you know, we're, we're, we're good guys. Indeed there, your leader, Mr. Moon. Can the teleprompter, though, deliver a knockout in round three? Let's go to the tape. Here in Colorado, the wind turbine manufacturing Vistas is, in, is investing $40 million to expand fa its factory and hire an additional 1,000 employees. Solar manufacturer Ber Meyer Berger is building a new solar cell factory just down the road in Colorado Springs. Ding, ding, win on points to the teleprompter. Better luck next time, Mr. President. Creepy Joe also made a return at a Thanksgiving event where the president mistook a six-year-old for a 17-year-old and complimented the young girl's ears, says Sky News All-Stars Caleb Bond and Liz Storer. And I love your ears. I love them. They're really cool. What's your name? Catherine. Catherine, what a beautiful name. That's my mommy's name. Well, nice to see. How old are you, 17? Six. Six. Now, as a one-off, maybe it's all right, but Caleb, we could show example after example of these. I, I can't get over... Uh, how old are you? 17? No, I'm <laughs> six. I mean, ma uh, we know he's a bit deficient in the mental department, but, like, should have gone to spec savers, buddy. If you can't tell the difference between a 17-year-old and a six-year-old, something is seriously weird. And he stayed on this weird tack at, at this event. This is a Thanksgiving event. He stayed on this weird tack about kids saying, you know, how much he loves kids and he loves spending time with kids. But we learnt something from him. Kids aren't human. And by the way, I like kids better than people. I wish I could stay and watch Wonka with you, but I'm not going to get to do that. Oh, I mean, poor Biden can't stick around and watch Willy Wonka. But he likes kids more than people. Kids aren't All people. All the kids it's are like, thank God he can't stay and watch man Wonka away with us. Me. Getting weird vibes from this old dude. Like, seriously. There are literal mega grabs if you go online of him just weirding kids yeah, out. Yeah. You know, stroking their sniffing hair, whispering hair. in their ear, sniffing their heads, hands on shoulders. And these kids' faces, because kids are like animals, right? They yeah, pick they up on weird vibes. Well, they, they I don't need to know anything to him, about you. People. I can sense it in the force. Joe Biden's worsening cognitive decline was also on show during his trip to San Francisco, where he was hosting Chinese dignitaries, says Liz Storer. This had to take the laugh because all these videos are just over the course of a few days, certainly within the same week. Here he is at obviously a very official event. Watch this, right? He picks his nose. He drops the contents of said nose. He's pointing it out to them, saying, don't stand on it, don't 
stand on it and then someone comes and stands on it and he looks at them like, what are you doing? I just said not to stand there because I dropped some snot. Like, I kid you not, this is now what the world press is capturing of the leader of the free world, the commander in chief. The dude doesn't even look like he knows where he is. I mean, for all we know, he's pointing at, at, the, at the little spaceman he can see down. Like, he just looks completely <laughs> zoned out. Well, I mean, he's surrounded by world leaders. This is the man we're counting on to keep the world out of World War Three, and he's busy trying to find where his snot landed. But An ex-White House physician backed up these cognitive concerns, warning Joe Biden is not fit to do the job of president anymore. And Donald Trump, uh, Joe Biden just turned 81 years old. Uh, many people will notice that Joe Biden is not the same Joe Biden today as he was, you know, two years, four years, six years ago. There's a mental decline. Uh, I know you haven't uh, done an analysis, um, haven't examined him, but if you look at the decline of Joe Biden and what America could have in store if he's elected for four more years, how fast does this decline happen based on your experience in the medical field? Well, it's happening quickly, Sean. And like you said, I've taken care of actually three presidents. I was also there during the Bush administration. Oh. So I know firsthand what it takes to be the commander in chief and the head of state. Uh, it, it's a grueling job, both mentally and physically. This man can't do the job. And it seems as though the public is cottoning on to Joe Biden's incompetence with his polling numbers in dire straits, according to former White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney. It's, it's everything going against Biden right now. And I, I know I'm a Republican saying that, and I, I don't take any joy in saying that. I'm trying to be straight down the middle with you. Inflation is not helping him. He's also losing the support of some of the pro-Palestinian wings of his party. The Democrat party is very closely aligned with the Palestinian movement here in the country. So there's a lot of Democrats who aren't happy with the president's handling of the situation in Gaza. But you mentioned that the, the one thing that is never going to change, in fact, it's just gonna continue to get worse, Laura, and that's his age. You can change a policy on spending that might help on inflation. You can change a policy on Gaza that might help uh, make more part of your base happy, but you're never going to change the fact that you just turned 81 last week, and that is a bigger and bigger issue with every mm. growing day. Yeah, look, uh, and Donald, Donald Trump never lets an opportunity to mock his opponent go to waste, and he did exactly that during an address in Iowa. And I'm very glad they didn't give me any notes, because if I did, I would have been reading. I would have been saying... Thank you, Lee. Here's Biden. Uh, thank you. I saw something the other day that was incredible. He's taking questions. And again, I wouldn't talk this way, but he indicted me. Can you imagine? I got indicted. I've never heard the Wharton School of Finance. They didn't have a subject on you get indicted. It wasn't like something you think about, right? My father, my mother and father, they're looking down. My son got indicted more than Alphonse Capone. Don't forget. Al Capone was the toughest, meanest guy. If you had dinner with him and if he smiled the wrong way, where he thought you were maybe smiling about him or mocking him, you were dead. You were a dead person. Scarface, you ever hear? Al Capone, Scarface. That was where the movie came from. He had a scar from here to here and he, did, he, he didn't get that scar from playing tiddlywinks. Do we agree? He got indicted one time. I got indicted four times for nothing, for nothing. And it seems like the gaffe curse has overtaken the Democratic Party, with Vice President Kamala Harris experiencing a word salad of her own, ironically whilst trying to defend Joe Biden's progressing age, reveals Sky News host Chris Kenny. Vice President is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Have a little listen to what she says in defence of the dottering President Joe Biden. First of all, I would say that age is more than a chronological fact. Hmm, age is more than a chronological number, hey? Well, that's the point about Joe Biden. It's not his age, it's about how lacking in mental acuity he is. Plenty of people are very, very bright at his age and older. Henry Kissinger was a case in point. So I don't know whether Kamala Harris does him any favours there, but listen to the full quote from Kamala Harris and see if you can work out what on hell, what on earth she's trying to say. First of all, I would say that age is more than a chronological fact. I spent a whole lot of time with our president, be it in the Oval Office or the Situation Room and in other places. And I can tell you, as I just mentioned, not only is he absolutely 
authoritative in rooms around the globe, but in the Oval Office, meeting with members of Congress, meeting with leaders in industry, meeting with community leaders, I will tell you that he is in front of, often, everyone in the room in terms of thinking about how we can resolve issues, negotiate in a way that is about concession where necessary, but for the sake of accomplishment and actual work. It's just a word salad. It doesn't mean anything. We don't know where she's going with it. And it occurred to me when I saw that, that we all know how bad Joe Biden is, but we know what his excuse is. It's his dementia, his age and his dementia. What's Kamala Harris's excuse?